Hello everyone, in peace of Christ all of you, please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, this is just a morning, I just actually woke up and I have a uh, uh, good time in the morning. Uh, please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Somebody posted in uh, my uh, YouTube page the following, and this guy obviously he have a, I don't know, he have an issue. Um, I will show you on the screen. I expose CP, exposing the heresy of modalism, uh, sibilinism. Please don't listen to him. Regard the Christianity until he repent. <laughs> I mean, people really sometimes, I feel sorry. You see, if you are really a Christian, I feel sorry for you because, uh, first of all, uh, you can call me and people they can listen to you and you will see the answer. But you decided to try to stab Christian in his back, right? And yet you claim to be Christian. Now, uh, then he posted a video I was saying to a Muslim. Actually, let me show you what I was saying to the Muslim so we can laugh together. Hello, everybody. Once again, uh, Christian, quote-unquote Christian prince, I must say at this point, espoused the heretical belief of modalism, also known as Sabellianism, i.e. Yes, brother. That it is the father who presents himself in three persons. Mm. That is, the word, the spirit, mm. or the father himself presenting himself in different persons. Mm. That is... The you see, you stupid, you just said in different persons. You just said... In different person the people who believe in modalism they don't believe in three person you are mentally ill and you need to go to a doctor if we go and see what modalism is you will see the following the tr the doctrines of the person of the Trinity present in three moods the second you believe that God the Father, God, the Son, the God, the, the Holy Spirit is a, a each one of them is a person. That means you don't believe in modalism. But look, look, like you are looking for uh, some attention, <clears throat> and I feel sorry for you. We as a Christian, we believe in everything mentioned and agreed upon our church father. And that mentioned in what it's called in Arabic, we call it the the Council of Nikia. Everything mentioned there is what we agreed upon. So you are being a foolish man. Sorry to say to you, even the Bible forbid you from saying the word foolish. But when you accuse a fellow Christian with foolish uh, statement, that is a shame on you. And I don't think you are even a Christian because a Christian, you know, the Bible says, if somebody he do wrong or etc take a witness and rebuke him but not in his back my friend you are a person who stab a person in his back and you lie about me and you say false things i did not say then he made another video and before we go there you see when somebody claim that we are speaking against the trinity and all 24 hours seven days a week uh, 365 a days I am inviting Muslims to believe in God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit when I say to a Muslim God he presents himself in three person I'm trying to explain to a person who knows nothing about Christianity what is a Trinity so how we know God we know God by God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit but you who have a maybe a, a problem of jealousy maybe I don't know what's your problem you try to fabricate stories and say things I did not say People, they are listening to me for centuries. When I say centuries, I mean because life, my life is a centuries. <laughs> centuries of fighting. Every four hours, I fight. <clears throat> An ignorance is like a century. I finish, uh, uh, like yesterday, I have I was online for how many hours, and I leave with a headache. And then a foolish you, after all what I do, you attack me in my back. And yet you claim to be Christian. This is not a Christian of you. Shame on you. Maybe you are looking to be unknown, and here we go. I made you know. Read what John chapter 14 says. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. 
and bring all things to your remembrance who is ever I have said unto you so here you see Jesus he mentioned clearly that the Holy Ghost is a person and uh, uh, he uh, uh, the father will send the Holy Ghost in his name the name of Jesus so here we see the three in the front of your eyes and you are being a fool and shame on you shame on you to fabricate lies and try to make me look like I said something I did not say always when we present Christianity to Muslims we have to speak in their language and we have to make it simple for them uh, you know the the problem is some Christian they, they speak to Muslims and they scare them and I will show an example this guy he made a video another video showing us again how foolish he is we go here we find him he made a video here saying Christian friends need to repent he is saying Christian do not drink Jesus blood I mean you are officially a fool to believe that really we drink Jesus blood literally that is a stupid of you my friend and I say that to you with no hesitation when you say to somebody we drink the blood of Jesus and you mean it literally that's mean you are saying we are zombie and people will think really that when we drink the juice or the wine in the church that is really we are drinking a blood Jesus says do this to remember me and he said this is my blood will be sacrificed for you but he is making resembling for what will happen to him in the cross the same as when Jesus he said that uh, destroy the temple I will build it in three days the Jews they said how you can this uh, this temple took more than 40 years <clears throat> and you can build it in three days so you are a fool like the Jews now you think that the temple is uh, when Jesus speak about the temple you think that this is a rock and now when Jesus he speak about his blood you think this is the juice the Messiah he was speaking about himself you destroy this temple I will build it in three days this is about he resurrecting himself I will build it so foolishness and stupidity when I say if I say to a Muslim we drink the blood of Jesus the Muslim will, will run away in a, in a second because of your foolishness because you're trying to make it that this is literally you know those weird people I feel sorry for them literally our Lord Christ he don't want stupidity because heresy come from stupidity and this is what you are saying We don't drink blood and anyone he say that Christians drink blood is a stupid we don't if you think really you are drinking blood you better go and watch some zombie movies but if you mean that this is Jesus saying do this to remember my blood will be sacrificed for you will be shed for you that is a true this is what Jesus said I know like sometimes people they like to be known maybe I mean you like people to watch a video of you but don't say stupid things otherwise people will laugh at you and don't claim things people did not say if we go to John uh, 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 6 verse 56 or Matthew 26 26 you will see uh, That Jesus speak that whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood remain in me but that is not about eating really literally the flesh of Jesus we are not zombie and nobody when Jesus he said that he jump on Jesus and start biting him you idiot because if the purpose of this is drinking really literally the blood of Jesus then the Apostle they should be jumping on him and sucking his blood and they will be eating his flesh literally he was between them there is no need for the for the bread <laughs> oh lord uh, 
this is all symbolic for what Jesus he did that he is the bread of life and he is the resurrection you know the blood here is what Jesus will 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 sacrifice for us and his blood will give us life same as his flesh his flesh came to us and is going to be de destroyed the flesh they will kill this flesh but still he will give us life by that so when when uh, uh, when you say such such a silly stupid thing i mean and you claim to be an orthodox i don't know who is the one who taught you orthodoxy but obviously you are a foolish man who have no idea what are you talking about we need to be careful when you speak to non-christians sometimes christians they say things will make anyone uh, uh, run away from a christianity uh, as an example even those who they are not like this guy who say would they are agree with them when the, in the way they say it i mean but you don't say that in the front of somebody who do not know what christianity is about when you say <clears throat> you are saved by the blood of jesus like the guy you you, you scared him what the blood of jesus what are you talking about you give him presentation explain to him first what the blood of jesus mean what do you mean what are you talking about right away you jump to the blood of jesus when a christian he say to a person you are saved uh, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, he paid for your sin. Okay, that, that's it. You say that to him, Jesus paid for your sin. Don't you need to explain what does that mean? Our Muslims, they use that against us. They say, look, the Christian, they say that Jesus, he paid for their sin. So the Christian, they can sin as much as they, they, they want. Why? Because a Christian, a naive Christian, right away, he starts jumping and saying, jumping around. Like, you know, sometimes we do the same as the Muslims. Somebody say something to us. We say something to them. And whatever that is, it doesn't matter. You are saved by the blood of Jesus. Okay, explain to him this guy is not a Christian. You see, Jesus, when he spoke about how you are saved, he did not say to us from the first second how you are saved. It was it was a it was a journey. When people they want to know who is Jesus, his his disciple who they are with him, they, still they want to know. They said to him, Why don't show us the Father? Even his disciples, they are like, who is, so who is the father? Where is the father? He said to them, I am with you all this time and you do not know me. He did not say to them from the first day, the answer. It took them time and they are the disciple of Jesus. So look what you do. If Jesus took him time to present who is he and to explain who is he for his disciple. Because of human nature, it's very hard for them to comprehend the nature of God. What you do, you present Jesus in two words. And you make it funny when you say we drink his blood and you are saved by his, by his blood. So the guy who do not know what Christianity is about, he will laugh at us and he will say those people are zombie. They are watching a horror movie. When the truth is totally the opposite. God is speaking not about blood. He's speaking about mercy by the blood of Jesus the mercy come to you when Jesus when we say to somebody that Jesus he paid for your sin we need to explain that Jesus did not allow sin otherwise people they will think that we are promoting sin and say okay Jesus he paid for my sin so I can sin as much as I want this is why Jesus said not everyone says to me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father. But the one who do his will. So before we tell them that Jesus, he saved us and he paid for our sin, we need to explain first and make it clear that Jesus don't allow us to commit sin and to promote sin. Otherwise, by quoting a statement out of context, you are making it look like that Christianity and Christ he give license for sin which is not true so we have to be careful when we speak specifically to non Christians who they have no background and you see when when in the Old Testament or even in New Testament you will notice sometime they do not need to explain things to you as an example when they speak about the 30 silver why did it not explain where the prophecy is located exactly which verses we can find it because everybody around is very well versed 
and because people around us are very well versed I do not need really to mention like now if he, if I'm talking to somebody he is very well versed in the Bible and I say to him uh, uh, Jesus is the Word of God okay he will know right away I'm talking about what verse exactly in the Bible but if I'm talking to somebody who have no idea what Christianity is about and I say to him Jesus is the Word of God what does that mean the Word is God and the Word was with God so we need to explain you see even John when he is speak to you as a Christian our Apostle John he speak to us he presented step by step if one verse is enough to explain who is Jesus then he should write only one verse and we are done the whole book should be one verse so what some Christians they do they present Jesus in a verse Do we understand guys so when we speak to someone he's a Muslim we should have a different approach first to explain to him when I say to a Muslim that your Quran is saying that Jesus is the spirit he is the word and he is uh, 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 the flesh I'm not saying <laughs> I'm saying to him you said that there's no Trinity but there there's a Trinity because a Trinity can be in many forms our Trinity is different from their Trinity so Jesus is in the Quran he is the word and he is the man and he is the spirit in the same time three in one so how you say there's no Trinity but you confirm the Trinity is not it in the book of John it says that the word was with God and the word is the God and verse number 14 it says the word became God became a man sorry with a flesh so you know when we try to explain to the Muslim and you you know and you see somebody coming with his foolishness says oh look Jesus saying that, uh, that this guy is saying that Jesus uh, he is uh, he is a three in one and mean the Trinity is just uh, something else you know like he is a spirit he is the word he is the man foolishness uh, okay what what day are you worshiping making holy uh, sanctify can you give me any reference by way i cannot call there is not there's no day for worshiping you see the bible says every day is the, the is sabbath for god which means if you celebrate god if you celebrate god every day can be sabbath sabbath is a day is designated for the lord so any moment any day any hour you designate for the Lord we are not people who pray in a certain time like a Muslims who they are hypocrite they pray in the corner Jesus he said go to your closet and pray which means should you know you can pray and by yourself because even this is more blessing for you for nobody you are not being a hypocrite and you are not getting the reward of people seeing you people who they are fake they try to present themselves that they are holy men or holy women and suddenly they are praying and crying and etc in front of the people but when they are alone they are a different story so we don't have how and where God is everywhere and God always can hear you if you want to pray my friend just to pray God is all hearing all listening he is not located in the location where he cannot hear you we don't believe in such a God all right uh, <clears throat> anyway so uh, how many times did Jibreel visit Muhammad we, 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 let us finish our topic first here and then we can go and speak about Muhammad and his madness uh, so we as a Christians we should be careful about how we speak about Christ to non Christians and don't bring your madness Taliban you see some Christian they act like Taliban we make fun of the Muslims but the fact they are more funny than the Muslim themselves you know you get so angry or Orthodox but you have a picture in your church I, I want to see you getting angry for that a, a picture I want to see you getting angry for someone entering the church she is not wearing proper clothes isn't it Jesus who flipped the table for people? They made the churches a place of buying and selling. And then you go to a church and then you find people buying and selling. 
I mean, people are silly and they get angry just because uh, you know if somebody feel jealousy. I really feel sorry for you. We are here. We are. We are. We are warriors, and we are fighting for the sake of the Lord. And we are bringing thousands and thousands and thousands of non-believers to Christ. And yet you try to stab us in our back. That is the devil, my friend, who is jealous, upset, angry. Do better than me. I want to see how many people they came, became Christians because of you. I assure you none. I challenge you to show me one person who became a Christian accepted the Christ because of you. So you have all the time to insult the Christians in their back, but you don't have a time to bring one Christian, one person to Christ. That means you are a hypocrite and you are, as Jesus said, your father is a viper. You are the son of your father, and that is the devil. They speak good, but they do bad. They speak holiness, but there's no fruit. Faith without fruits is dead faith. That's what the Bible teach. So instead of giving us a speech about what is right and what's wrong, show us your fruit, my friend. And even your speeches is funny and stupid and silly. Now, we will not continue with this topic. I'm going to come back. I will make a new broadcast. Actually, today, supposedly, we will have a new uh, a Merry Christmas time together, and we will not talk about Muhammad. We will have a good time, but not now. It's going to be afternoon. So in a few hours from now, we will be live again, and we Christians, we believe that God is all about the glory, and nobody can steal the glory of God from us. Not by gossiping, not by lies, not by stabbing in the back. The devil have all the tricks and he can try. You know, uh, always you notice that if you do nothing good, the devil, he will never throw a rock at you. An empty tree. Nobody even care for it. The second you start bringing a lot of fruit, all, all the devil behavior appears suddenly all around you. And the purpose is to try to make you look bad. So don't listen to Christian Prince. You like it, you don't like it, people listen to me, and I'm bringing people to Christ, and this is what is making you upset. You know, I remember once uh, a bishop, and he is from an Orthodox church. And by the way, I love Orthodox people. They are my brothers and sisters in Christ, same as the Catholic. So I'm, I'm mentioning the name of it, the bishop, I mean, what church he is, because this is what happened. He said to me, what do you get from this? I said, what do you mean? Did I mean Islam and etc. cetera? Why you get it? What, what do you get from this? I said to him, okay, how many people you, he's like almost 70 years old, and he's a bishop, very well known. How many people you from the Muslims you brought to Christ? He was a mute. I said, ask me the same question. Ask me the same question. This is how silly some of you, some some people are. Yet he is a bishop at the age of seventy, and instead of encouraging me in what I am doing, he is trying to stop me. What do you get from this? I mean, look how silly. What do you get from this? What Paul he got from that? What Peter he got from that? What all the disciples of Jesus got from that? Let me tell you what they got. They got killed. They got crucified. They got tortured. Do you see the madness of many people who claim to be Christians? Many today, the Christianity for them is just to go to the church and do certain movement like the Muslims, hypocrites, you know? And we say our father out of heaven, and we say the law of, uh, uh, the law of Nikia to, to, uh, to present our faith, and then we go home. That's the Christianity for them. And then we make barbecue, and then the family come, and we are Christians. That's it. 
they forgot the command of Jesus they forgot all the parables of Jesus that you have you have a duty to bring people to me and yet they claim to be the Christians and supposedly we are not right anyway it's good sometimes that if somebody make us angry because that encourage us to do more work and to expose the lies uh, if I show you if I show you just yesterday in Facebook and in Skype how many people they send me messages saying we are out of Islam you will not believe it not only they left Islam but they accepted Jesus as their Lord as their Savior and yes we teach the Muslims that we believe in God which is one but God is a three person how we know God we know him by God the Father God the Son God the, the Holy Spirit three person but one God we don't accept any foolishness we don't accept any lies and we are the people who defend the truth not you You know when uh, when when uh, the Messiah was baptized, and our Father, our Lord, the Father, He spoke. He said, "This is my begotten Son. This is my only begotten Son." Isn't it clear that this is a person speaking about a person? This is my only begotten Son. So it's very silly. I mean, the Bible is so clear. Some people they say the Trinity is hard to understand. Actually, the Trinity is very simple to understand. And you know, if I try to explain it by like sometime I use the sun to explain it, you will find a foolish man like this guy says, Ah, oh, look what he said. He is resembling the Trinity with the sun. Oh, he worshiped the sun. But for those who they are not Christians who do not know how to understand the Trinity, I will make it simple for you. And I will use the example of the sun again. And the one who like it, like it, the one who is stupid, he can go. And bite your tongue so we look at the sky and we see the Sun as a star how we recognize the Sun how we know the Sun is there if the Sun does not have light we will not know and we will not recognize the Sun so the Sun send light And this light come to the earth and we are here because of the light and we are as a human living in this earth we were able to recognize the Sun as a star and the light of the Sun because the light come to us so yes the star the Sun is still there but the light of the star the Sun is here and when the light of the Sun came to us we feel warm which means there is a heat but look yes we see the Sun this one we see it it is type here The Sun is visible it is something we see we see what the Sun the light is visible The heat is invisible.
not to be seen to make it simple now we don't see the heat but we feel it is the heat exists absolutely but yet we don't see it so for those who they are not Christians and trying to understand our God the father he himself is holy and everything about him is holy the light of the Sun is light but in the same time that light is the light of the Sun the heat of the Sun is a heat by itself let us say it's a person if we can call it this way it's an energy it's a power by itself but the heat of the Sun is coming from the Sun and I'm using a physical object just to explain to you so now we have a light we have a star we have a heat three but they present one now a, a, a donkey like this guy he would say see he just said again that we don't believe in three person no we believe in three person because the light now is by itself and the Sun as a star is by itself and the heat by, uh, 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 in the earth is by itself but the three is God who how he present himself to us how we know God this is what I mean by saying how he present himself God the Son God the Father God the Holy Spirit we don't believe in three gods we believe in God one God three person and they are distinct from each other so uh, the the understanding is very th is simple is not really complicated uh, you do not need to be a scientist to understand it and if you say to me what is the Holy Spirit you know here we go we gave you the, the example of the heat which resemble what what uh, what the Holy Spirit is because the Holy Spirit is something we feel but we cannot catch we cannot hold even though it says that the Holy Spirit appear or let's say uh, uh, you know like uh, when we as a Christian we say uh, the Holy Spirit came to me the Holy Spirit spoke to me the Holy Spirit uh, inspire me uh, 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 but the appearance the appearance of God uh, God he have ability he's almighty he can present himself in, in in the way he wish and the way he is so God he present himself in three as a three person and those are three person they are the best way to explain to us the perfect and the perfection of God you know someone they say to me when God he became a man and Jesus he said my God is my father is a greater than me so how they are how you say to me you believe that uh, Jesus if you see here let me show you <clears throat> Uh, let us highlight okay you know we know that the Bible says that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God right he is the visible image of the invisible God uh, let us see and the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life we proceed from the Father and the Son, uh, who, uh, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who together with the Father and the Son worship and glorify, who spoke by the prophet, I believe in one, I believe one holy Christian, uh, uh, you know, apostolic church. So you will see here, and for sure we acknowledge the baptism, which is, uh, 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 very clear in the Bible. So w when we speak about God and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are not speaking about three gods. We are speaking about one God, but we are speaking about three person. And uh, uh, the best way to explain it to someone he is not a believer is to give him the same as Jesus he used to do. He teach him by parables. You know, 
he always the messiah he always speak by purpose he don't really give you a direct story uh, because it's very hard for you to comprehend but he give you uh, let us say an uh, imaginary story about things happening so like god he gave it investment uh, the master he gave his servant three investment one he hired it one he invested one he doubled it etc so those are stories not the purpose of them is not the story Jesus is not a storyteller for entertainment, but the purpose is to make the one who is simple understand what the Messiah is saying to him. And the same as the Trinity. What on Trinity in Quran? We do, we don't want to talk about the Quran now. We want to you know we want to finish this, but anyway. Yeah, so you know, like you know, when we say when I gave an example of the sun, and it has light, it has uh, heat, and it is the sun in the same time. Uh, uh, this is about presenting that God is one, and uh, 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 the holy is the same. You see, when the light of the sun go in a dirty, dirty water, which one is going to get dirty? The light of the sun or the water? The fact the water will get clean. The light of the sun is going to kill and destroy all the bacteria, and that represent the holiness of jesus he is the light of the world so if he come to us in the flesh of a man that will not make him dirty that still he is holy even he is in the flesh of the man and his holiness because of his nature as god but yet he is a man in the same time so he is full man, full God, but this full man is still he did not commit sin like the rest of us. He was not tempted by desire like the rest of us. He did not fail into temptation of the devil, even when the devil tried to tempt him. Because simply he is God and man in the same time. So uh, I hope we made it simple and easy for people to understand. And anyone he says something else, we don't believe in that, and this is a hypocrisy and fallacy and a false statement of false person. All right. Anyone have a question? Christians have statues and pictures. My friend, first of all, having statues and pictures, this is not what Jesus said, and I agree with you. But how you explain to me pictures and statues in your religion? Abdul as long you are against pictures and statues isn't it the Quran says that Allah he allow his a prophet to have statues just to show you the hypocrisy of the Muslims they say they are against statues first of all your prophet he gets black stone so if you are against the statues and pictures you tell me what the black stone is for you and why you kiss it Secondly, in chapter 34, verse number 13, it says that Allah, he gave his prophet, Suleiman, the prophet Solomon, the permission to build images and statues in his synagogue. Can you explain that to me, Mr. Abdul? My Lord, in the, in, from the first chapter in the book of Genesis says it clearly that you don't make you don't make any images from the first book the, the book of Genesis you don't make any images from what is above or down in earth how your God is making images in the synagogue and making statues are you there Abdul Mr. Abdul, are you there? Huh? Yeah, your God, first of, first of all, don't say to me why you don't accept the Holy God. We are the one who have a Holy God. You don't have a Holy God. Because if your God holy, he will not say to Muhammad, go and kiss a black stone, which is a vagina. If your God is holy, he will not say, oh, Muhammad, any woman, she want to give her vagina to you, take her and F her. That is not Holy God. Don't talk about holiness. You are the last one to talk about holy. 
you follow a child molester a perverted man a thief a criminal a killer a rapist and yet you speak too much about holy now answer Abdul don't change the topic why your God in the Quran is ordering you to build synagogue full of images and statues we worship a man yeah that man he can resurrect people from death that man he can tell you what you hide in your houses your God he cannot tell you what you hide in your houses when your prophet was accused of a sin underwear your God he sent a message saying it's not him but he could not tell us who is the one who took it you know why because the one who took it is Muhammad you see how they keep jumping like monkeys he changed topics now he don't want to talk about pictures no more do you see it now we show it to him from the Quran he don't want to talk about pictures and images now we showed him that he's a prophet he kisses stones he don't want to talk about images and idols and white idols worship no more they keep jumping like monkeys from place to place because they cannot take it so are you going to answer me my friend why in your Quran it says that Allah he ordered his prophet to build images synagogue full of images and statues Forget about in his uh, Abdul. Look, look at the guy. Look at the answer. Moses can split the sea in half. Why don't you worship him? Moses did not split the sea in half, you donkey. He never did. That was God. You are a certified donkey like your prophet. Are you going to answer or not? Why your God ordering his prophet to build synagogue full of images and statues? Idols, worshippers? Huh? You know, Abdul, it was God. You are right. It was God who healed the leper and the blind. That is Jesus, my friend. Thank you very much. Because in your Quran it says, I, I create for you from the mud a bird, a figure of a bird, and I breathe into it. I, that is God. Then you Muslim, you say to us, well, the Quran says by permission of Allah. Abdul, by permission of Allah or not permission of Allah, I'm getting your Allah busted. This is how Allah is weak. Permission is a stupid word you say. There's no proof of it. Here we go. Did Allah, prom uh, Allah based on your religion, Allah, he gave me permission to get him busted. Because in Islam, there's no free will. <laughs> and that's mean your God is a stupid. Because if your God knows that many people will be deceived and believe Jesus is God because he gave him too much miracles. So why he gave him those, those miracles? Is it enough to give him one? One. Okay, he make five uh, blind men see, six men, but that's it. Why he need to make him creator? He can resurrect people from death. He can create from the mother. I mean, what is that is about? You just made him a creator. Hmm? Stupidity. Do we have an Abdul? Any Muslim, any Abdul, he have something to say. <clears throat> you know, while we have, we have, uh, like in the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 20, you shall not make for yourself any idols. You know, it says it clearly. We see the Quran breaking the command of God, and he is making the God himself. You see, this is not the man. Doing his own choice. In the book of in the book of Genesis, when we when we read about God, that God He is the Creator who created everything in earth and in heaven. And then God He confirmed.
that you should not make images to worship. And a Muslim, he come to us, he say, you Christians, you have images in your churches. He claimed that we are people who worship idols. Well, I don't have uh, that in my church, my friend. And I don't kiss pictures. And I don't pray in front of pictures. And this is not what God said to me. So if people, they do something is not in the Bible, not biblical, this is their sin. But as we see here, your God himself is promoting building synagogue with idols and images. And this is the irony about Muslims. They speak too much about... Uh, 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 you know, idols. Islam is against idolism. Islam is refuse idols. Islam is not a religion of idols. But the fact, all of all of Islam is about idols. Do you have any answer, Abdul? I challenge any Muslim to explain to us why a prophet of God who worship God only he kisses stone. Yeah, what is your first? What is your first gracious command in Islam? You Muslims, you have no command actually. Where is the ten command of your? Where is the ten commandment of Musa in the Quran? You broke them all. You associate the name of God with the name of a man. His name is Muhammad. To the point you made shahada contain two names, which means it's not enough to believe in Allah, to be a believer and to be saved. No, you have to believe in Muhammad. You see, we never heard of the Jew saying that there's no God but 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 uh, uh, but Jehovah and there's no prophet but Moses. This is only the creation of the pagan Muslims. There's no God but Allah and his stone is holy. Mwah, and we kiss it. This is only the creation of the pagan Muslims. Is that right? Huh? A prophet of God who kisses stones and yet he claimed that he worship one God. Why the stone is there? What is this stone is about? You pray in front of a stone, you kiss a stone, you go around the stone, and you pray in the direction of a stone. All your religion is based on a stone. If we steal that stone from there, what will happen to you? How you can practice your religion without a stone? Why all of you Muslims, you have to go there if you are not pagan? If God is everywhere, no, not in Islam, sorry, in Islam, God is not everywhere. If your God is everywhere, you do not need to face the black stone. Face God, where is God? How you can face the black stone anyway? Right? Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any Abdul? And you will notice that the Muslims right away they change the topic. Until now, he is not answering us why his God is allowing the statues and the images in his in, in his synagogue. Did you see it? Do you see any answer? Did you see any answer yet in the text? Suddenly, they don't want to talk about the topic. That's it. It's gone. He mentioned that Christians, they have pictures in their churches. And then since we showed him this, he don't want to talk about it no more. Abdul, do you have a picture of the black stone in your home? If you don't, why? Do you know why? I will tell you why. Because you Muslims worship stones. 
to the point you consider it holy to the point you cannot be pictures of it and put it there in your house so you have to go literally physically and kiss it you know what I'm saying guys Solomon he made statues for decoration okay fine if Solomon made a status for decoration guys look what he said let me take a snapshot for what he said if Solomon took make status for decoration so why your prophet he said that the one who make a picture Allah will will torture him in the in the in the day of judgment a picture not to worship just any picture you see the stupidity of your prophet if you make a picture Allah will bring you in the judgment day and he will say to you breathe into it breathe huff, huff, huff. Can you make it alive? So your God claim that if you make a picture you are creating you are became you, you try to be a creator Let's see You see it Abdul The prophet said, he entered upon his house. He found what in his house? Look what he found. Laugh, laugh at yourself and laugh at your religion and laugh at the mad Muhammad who say things and he do the opposite. He just told us in the Quran that Allah himself, he orders Sulaiman to have idols, statues, and pictures. But Muhammad, he said, the prophet entered upon, his, his, upon me, which means his house, while there was a curtain having pictures of animals there's what a curtain having pictures of animals in the house his face got red with anger and then he got hold of the curtain and tore it into pieces the prophet said such people as paint these pictures will receive serviced punishment in the day of resurrection so the one who have a picture of a dog in the curtain who is not worshiping it just for decoration and you are the one who said to me it's just for decoration what is the abdul who said to me that ceremony he did that for decoration abdul are you there are you there decoration boy uh, he did for decoration well you're a prophet saying that the one who do that for decoration allah will torture him and do you know how Allah will torture him? He will insert in his anus 70 cubit chain. Every ring of it is equal to all the air in the world. Look now, he changed the topic. He want to talk about the Trinity. Did you notice? <laughs> Suddenly he want to talk about the Trinity. All right? Coward potato like your prophet. Go and hide between the legs of Aisha. A prophet who wear his wife clothes yet he claimed to be a man not only that he claimed that he never receive Quran unless he wear his wife clothes are you there Abdul so still you agree that you can do have pictures for decoration can you actually all of you are Muslims you see the Bible speak about not to make images in heaven in like in the book of exodus as example uh, or in earth and this is the purpose of it not to worship your prophet he is going supposedly more extreme he says you cannot have images at all even if it's not for worship but yet the coward and the and the liar he kiss a black stone which is one more ugly to have an image of an animal in a curtain or to kiss a black stone huh which is more which is more against God teaching look what this guy he said about decoration and now he will took it back do you have decoration in your house Abdul Solomon made the status of decoration not for worship <laughs> why you need a status inside the synagogue this is a place of worship Why inside the synagogue?
potato and if it is okay to have pictures and decoration and status for decoration why you're a prophet he said that the one who have a curtain for decoration he will be tortured in the day of judgment you are a potato literally right anyway uh, we will be back in a few hours please you know just uh, remember we will be back in a few hours we will have uh, at the three I think three o'clock right yeah three o'clock Eastern time maybe I will make it earlier I will see but uh, uh, keep your notification on in YouTube and we will see and we will have a good time together today uh, we will we will celebrate a Christmas together and by the way there's some funny people they say Christmas is not a uh, uh, Christian uh, practice that's false because in in every day is a Christmas as long as it has the name of Christ on it uh, you see people they do sometimes some people they claim to be Christian but they act like Taliban again they are silly and they are you know I don't know what what to say so oh where in the Bible it says do Christmas you know you know it's the Bible says glorify your God your Lord every day so if a day will make mercy bring mercy to people will gather people together in the name of Christ that is a Christmas Obama and the infidels and the pagans and the Muslims all of them they are united the front against Christmas did you ask yourself why the devil is angry from the Christmas because a Christmas is bringing Christ to the house of millions and tons of thousands of billions of people actually around the earth bringing Christ to his their houses without even knowing children's babies they are in love with the Christ without even knowing because they say the second you say Christmas you just mention Christ and you are celebrating Christ we are not celebrating a date we are not celebrating a day nobody can celebrate a date again and it doesn't matter really the date of the birth of Jesus Jesus he said before Abraham I am so his birth have nothing to do with his existence right and don't say X must that is a stupid act this is what the atheist and the liberals try to do of it they try to make it holiday so like when Obama was in the office he made an announcement that we celebrate holiday nobody say Christmas no more eight years he's trying to fight Christmas he didn't want to see the word of Christmas in the White House he didn't want to see the word of Christmas in any government office he didn't want to see the Christmas in Walmart he didn't want to see the word of Christmas anywhere and he lost big time the devil is angry from the Christmas so let us celebrate it all right every day for me is my Christmas day for we have a Christ and you have nothing and don't ever say X and don't ever say happy holiday say it as it is happy Easter hmm? happy Christmas Merry Christmas not x mass the second you say x you are x in jesus you are not making the word short maybe some people they think they are just uh, making it uh, like easier to type that's stupid of you jesus is not x you know one day an atheist he said to me prove to me that jesus is god and suppose that he's very very smart you know and you know when the atheist uh, like oh, no, he said to me uh, uh, and uh, prove that god is exist too and it's very funny that somebody want to ask me to prove God to be exist, but he himself believed that God does not exist. So if I ask you the same question, prove to me that God does not exist, can you? How something is not exist, you want to prove him not to be exist. If he does not exist, how you can prove him not to be exist? <laughs> 
Uh, guys, are you saying to me? If he is not exist, how you want to prove him not to be exist? It's like mission impossible, right? Same time I ask him, okay, just to be sure you are not drunk. What is the date today? He said to me, I forgot which year, which month. Let us say it was July 7. I said, which year? He said, let us say 2010. I said, thank you. You just to prove that Jesus is exist. That is the date of the Lord. How you say to me, prove to me that Jesus is exist, you donkey, and you are just giving me the date, which means your salary, your life, your day, your time, your your night, your your morning, your sunset is based by the time of Jesus. And you are telling me he doesn't exist. So you must be literally a donkey who live by the date of Jesus, but yet you don't believe in Jesus. A Muslim saying that Jesus is a Muslim. In order for Jesus to be a Muslim, he have to be child molester like your prophet. Is he? In order for Jesus to be a Muslim, he have to kiss stones and lick it. And the stone have to be in the shape of a vagina. In order for Jesus to be a Muslim, he have to be a thief, a rapist, a killer. But as you see, Jesus is none of those. Right? So it's very funny to say to me that Jesus was a Muslim. Did Jesus marry a child? She is six years old. That's what Muslims do. Praise be to Allah, brother. I mean, this is the true Islam. In order for Jesus to be a Muslim, he have to go to somebody of his disciple and then he flirt with the wife of the disciple as Muhammad he did with his own son wife while she is in the house of the husband. If Jesus does that, then he is a Muslim. If Jesus is a Muslim, he have to promote adultery in the heaven. Because any man who sleep with many women, this is adultery. The Muslims always they quote for us stories from the Old Testament about the king who have seven hundred wives, who said that this is God promoting him to do so. This man was a sinner, and he asked God for forgiveness. The Lord, He said, you should not multiply your wives. And the Messiah, he said, that the man and the women, same as in the Old Testament, the man, he will leave his parents and he will be one with the women. They will be married and they will be a khad. They will be one person. We have one person. Even God, when he created Adam, he created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve's. So your God, he promote idolatry, promote muta marriage. Have you ever heard of, imagine Jesus, Jesus, the one who said, if your eye fail you, if you look, if you wish to have a woman, she is not yours. It's better to, to unblock your eye and throw it better than having all your body thrown in the hellfire. While Muhammad, he saw a woman walking by and he went to his wife and he did his wife. And then he came back and he says the women, she come in the image of a, of a devil and live in the image of the devil. So while Jesus was saying, but if you wish to have a woman, she is not yours. You are risking yourself to go to hell. Muhammad was looking at women, staring at her until he got horny. Do you see it? The prophet, he saw a woman. So he came to his wife Zainab. He saw a woman. What does that mean? He got horny. And in order for a man to get horny, that means he was thinking dirty. Why a married man who have many wives are looking at a woman staring at her until he get horny? Unless he is doing it in purpose. And yet he claim that he is an innocent. It is the woman who is the devil. But the, the woman, she did nothing. She just walk in the shape in the devil for him. So if she is in the shape of the devil, why you get horny? Muhammad, he got horny if he see the devil, guys. 
if Muhammad he see the ass of the devil he got horny the woman she is wearing a veil she is a Muslim woman she walk by Muhammad he got horny how Muhammad get horny you tell me because he is a decent man we will not take any Skype call for now because uh, later we will come back I just wanted really to be here for just actually 10 minutes but here we go as usual we decide for 10 minutes and then we stay for an hour or maybe maybe more so anyway guys uh, we will we will be done with this and uh, uh, we encourage the Muslims to call us uh, when we are live on air again and we will be back in a few hours and we will come all of you Muslims uh, to uh, to explain to us your religion and to explain to us what Islam is about when we are live on air again you know uh, so we like you to be here and we like you to say to us and to answer us and my experience is I never saw a Muslim answering me anything oh uh, you know before we go you remember you remember yesterday a guy he, he called us and he says he want to prove to us that Jesus was not crucified do you remember right he said uh, because somebody he says to me okay this guy he argue he was shouting and he is uh, you know he keep going going on what is the easiest way to shut them up my friend the easiest way is the Quran because what they were saying to us trying to explain the Bible to us saying fabricating lies they said that Jesus was not the one who was a crucified it was a person who is his name is Barnabas right but that will destroy the Quran because the Quran said As long they are trying to say to us, and this is many arguments the Muslim they use, as long they are saying that the one who was crucified was not Jesus, it was Barnabas, that means the Quran did lie. Because the Quran confirmed that the Jews, they said, we slew Jesus, the son of Mary, not Jesus, the son of Abdul. Correct? The Jews did not scream, says we slaughter Barabbas. So if the verse saying there clearly that the Jews they asked to free Barabbas, that's mean the Jews are free Barabbas and they knew who is Barabbas. The ruler he said to them, Which one you want me to free? Jesus, the one is called the Christ, the Messiah, or the Barabbas? They said the one is called the Christ. So when a Muslim he says no, it was the other one who was crucified. That means the Quran is lying, because the Quran said that we slew the Messiah. You see the word Messiah, not Barabbas. Do you see it, guys? Do you see how easy it is to to get them busted? But sometimes we have to go with them in their lie in order to drag them. This is the method I do with Muslims. A Muslim, if you give him the answer right away. He will play all the games. You have to trap him. He's like a he's like a rabbit. You have to give him a carrot, and he followed the carrot, and he keep moving his mouth, but he's saying nothing. He's stupid. The more he talk, the more he do poo poo. Let him talk as much as he can, and then at the end he got him busted. He is inside the cage. And sometimes I like to make the Muslim excited. And what I mean by that, I make the Muslim feel like he is making point, like he is like a little bit winning. Until he get because you know, like he is in the edge of the fence. I want you to get in the fence. <laughs> get get more, get to get. And he get excited more and more. So he get in, he get in, he get in. And when he is in, he cannot leave. Then we get him. Don't ever give to the Muslim what is going to say, what you are going to say to him next. The second you know, he know what you will say next, he will play games. Are you getting my point? Like now, if I say, okay, you are saying this, I say that, here we go, the, the Quran, he will say, no, 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 let him say, let him say, let him make, make it clear. You remember yesterday when we have this Abbas? I said to him, do you see that this is, do you say that when God, he said to uh, David, uh, 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 you know, I will, 
let your wife go to someone else and your son will die do you believe that this is unjust he said uh, yeah, mm, yeah I mean, uh, and then it took me like five six times repeating the same question until i made him admit that this is unjust if i show him right away what is the story about Solomon in the hadith he will not agree to say with me that this is unjust you have to wait make him admit that this is unjust and this is not right and then he cannot take it back then you spank him what with is coming all right are we good okay Ali you have an answer for what Ali you have an answer for what I never heard of a Muslim he have an answer of anything even your God Allah don't have an answer okay call me later my friend call me later you know when uh, when when the when the people they asked Muhammad about what is the spirit Muhammad took him a few weeks and he come back saying nothing he said the ruh is from the command of my God he did not ask you if it's command of your God or not what is the ruh I mean have you ever heard of a more silly stupid answer like this imagine somebody debating me and he said to me, Christian Prince, I challenge you to explain to me what the word spirit mean. And then I go, I stay in my house for five, six weeks, and then I come back to you and says, only Allah knows. So are you saying to me, you know more than your prophet? And your God? How silly this answer is, only, only Allah knows? The spirit is from the command of my Lord and you do not know. Like, what is the answer? They are asking you, what is the spirit? <laughs> what a dummy God. Is that a God? They ask you, what is Pepsi Cola? You say to them, Pepsi Cola is from the command of my God. What does that mean? And you do not know much. Allah knows everything. Like, what is the answer? Where is the answer? Until now, we are waiting. Uh, Allah, what is Mercedes? Mercedes is uh, from the command of my God, and he knows everything. I mean, this is deep. Your God, he cannot even explain a simple question about the spirit. What is the spirit? Hmm? Allah knows best but what Allah knows Allah he knows that the baby come from the sperm of the man coming from the backbone and the sperm of the women coming from the ribs no problem anyway guys uh, let us uh, let us finish for now and uh, we will be back in a few hours uh, this is just to answer somebody about uh, some foolishness he was saying and we will be back soon to celebrate our uh, our lord and as you know every day every day we celebrate our lord for every day we glorify his name and every day we praise him and every day he is with us the lord he said every two of you remember me i will be between them which means i will be the third between you i will be they are with you and that is clear proof that the Messiah is God Muhammad he cannot do that Allah he cannot do that even Allah he have to come from the seven heaven to the lowest heaven every night so he might hear the Muslims while Jesus saying any one of you any two of you mention my name I will be between you I will be hearing you I will be listening to you and loud right now as we speak he is with us we don't have the God of Islam who is an idol who cannot present himself anywhere anyhow he is just a name have no knowledge of anything proving his foolishness in every statement we have in the Quran the Quran is the best book to explain the foolishness of the pagan God of Islam and we are very grateful that this book is still exist until now and I am really upset that the goat ate big part of the book but in the same time i'm happy she did not eat it all so thank you very much goat for not eating it 
and I hope you will not do the same mistake again so we can love more see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is a stupid made by a stupid for the stupid see you bye-bye